You're listening to Fringianity. Hello, this episode is going to deal with transgenderism and children and basically the world that supports this and promotes this. Okay, that being said, let's begin with some scriptures from the Bible that deal with this kind of stuff. Genesis 1:27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Deuteronomy 22:5. A woman shall not wear a man's garment, nor shall a man put on a woman's cloak. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord your God. Romans 1.24-32 through 32. Therefore God gave them up to the lusts of their hearts, to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason God gave them up to dishonorable passions, for their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another, men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a disbased mind to do what ought not to be done. Leviticus 18.22 You shall not lay with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. And finally, this one deals with children. Matthew 18.5-6 and whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. A six-year-old boy forced to live as a girl while mom threatens dad for not going along. Yeah, that's in Dallas, Texas. Uh, turns out the boy actually does not want to be dressed as a girl and the father just wants the boy to be able to live the way the little boy wants to. But the mother decided that the boy needs to be a little girl and is trying to get basically force this kid into becoming a female. This is the world we live in. This is insanity at its highest. Uh, there's an old picture of Rome and it's like an old painting and the and the picture shows Rome literally burning and it's literally the fall of Rome well, that's the picture I constantly imagine or I envision when I think of what's happening in the U.S. today. I mean, literally, we are, we are asking for death to come to this country in the fastest means possible. And it is very, it's, it's scary to think about how, uh, how easily God could just destroy this whole country for the way that we're acting. I mean, literally in this, it's science, okay? Or I shouldn't say science. Archaeologists 
Uh, quote, this is from a, um, a, late, a recent news article. Archaeologists uh, say Sodom and Gomorrah literally was destroyed by fire and brimstone falling from the sky. You know, it's crazy when archaeologists are saying, literally, that uh, Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed the way that the Bible describes it for all of its messed up stuff. So, I mean, it's, it's getting bad. It's getting bad when this country is looking at children as a means to, oh, they, they need to have the ability to choose their sex now. They need to have the ability to do whatever they feel, even at age three or whatever. You know, it doesn't matter what age you are. If today you feel like you're a, a Tyrannosaurus Rex, you must be one, obviously. I mean, if a man, a, a man can marry a horse nowadays, it is perfectly fine. A man could marry his dog. A man could think he is a dog. A man could think he's a he's a little baby. A man could think he's a kitten. And it's perfectly fine. We're supposed to look at them as normal at that point. But that's getting off the subject. The subject is transgenderism and children. Two things that I think don't go together. As far as I'm concerned, it is abuse to tell a kid that whatever they think they are, they can be that, and who are we to, to decide? The child must decide for itself what gender it is, because that's not that's not our job as it's not the parents' job, it's not the adults' job to know you know whether right something's right or wrong. The children who are easily persuaded, I mean, you could literally say, would you like this? Like to do this for a piece of candy? And the child would probably say yes. And yet that child is going to make decisions that are going to destroy or make long-lasting changes to this child's life forever. Seems a little strange to me that that's suddenly the thing that they're going for. But it's not really strange, because the world has chosen everything that is anti-Christ. So, the world wants things that run counter to what God originally wanted for his children. So that's why we're sitting where we're at right now. So now, I'm going to play for you um, something that a lot of people probably already have seen, because this went around pretty quick when it did come out. But this is a commercial from Celine Dion talking about how parents should not label their kids male or female. They should just be uh, black or gray clothing and just be the most generic, uh, middle-of-the-road thing that you could be. Um, sounds a little satanic to me, especially with this clothing line that she has that's very uh, gender-neutral. Um, you know, with little gray skulls on the clothing, and it's just strange stuff. And I, I've seen little hand prints, like gray hand prints on this black shirt or whatever on kids. It's like grown-up hand prints. What is that? Is that transgender uh, pedophilia? I don't understand what that is. But anyway, I've seen all these different child uh, gender-neutral type clothing because, you know, we the next generation of children need to grow up um, not knowing what the hell they are so that the New World Order can raise them into being a perfect uh, fighting machine for the Antichrist when Christ returns. That's basically what this is. So here's the commercial with Celine Dion, just so you know what I'm talking about. Oh. It's okay, it's okay. It's I'm Celine Dion. Our children, they are not really our children, as we are all just links in a never-ending chain that is life. For us, they are everything. But in reality, we are only a fraction of their universe. We miss the past. 
They dream of tomorrow. We may thrust them forward into the future, but the course will always be theirs to choose. I can't believe they call security. I mean, oh, come on, I'm Celine Dion. <laughs> I'm not spending the night in jail. So, yeah, you get the gist of it. I'm not going to play everything. She basically got caught by security because she's putting uh, transgender colors on all these babies at the hospital, whatever, and it's really weird. But And she's Celine Dion, so, I mean, it's okay if she tells you that you're not supposed to label your kids male or female because, you know, there's many other genders. There's not just one gender. There's not just two genders anymore. There's more than just male and female. You know, God created them male and female. That whole thing, you know, we, we got to go against God. You know, I always thought she was just a Christian, you know. Celine Dion, she's a Christian. She's a good Christian woman, you know. Oh, she has this Christian, you know, life, and she's such a good singer, so that makes her such a good person. No, that's wrong. Uh, your celebrity status does not get you into heaven. And especially when you're teaching people things that are uh, totally against everything that God has said. But whatever, that's just, uh, that's just one step in the negative antichrist system way that these people are pushing. Now, here's another little little uh, news thing that I'm going to play here, talking about uh, transgenderism and children in school and all that stuff. It's right in the news. Um, this one should make your head explode. But you know, I have another one after this. If this one doesn't make your head explode uh, with anger. And it, this just should just make people upset and sick of this world. I mean, because I, I, this type of stuff makes me just hate this world so badly that I literally just want to get out of this house and just run out into the woods and just separate myself from humanity until the return of Christ. But unfortunately, I can't do that because I'm supposed to, you know, proclaim the gospel to the world and do God's will. So it's not like I can just do that. But... I tell you what, this really sets me off to know that this stuff is happening to children. And it's a righteous anger, so don't tell me that I'm not supposed to be angry or whatever. So anyway, listen to this news. Tonight we're taking a closer look at something that's been getting a lot of attention recently, the subject of being transgender. We've seen adults share their stories on television shows and in magazines, but rarely do we hear from the youngest members of the transgender community. Tonight, our national correspondent, Kate Snow, is here with one family's very personal story. Kate? Lester, good evening. By some estimates, there are 700,000 adults in the U.S. who are transgender. And while we don't know the exact number of children, increasingly families are going public with what it means to be a transgender kid. Five-year-old Jacob LeMay is fierce. He loves karate and dogs and spaceships and playing with his sisters. So two sisters and you're the brother right yeah were you always the brother i'm not always what were you before i'm their a sister how come it changed um because i wanted to be a boy okay in the beginning mimi and joe lemay were raising three girls <laughs> but when mia was around two she started saying i'm a boy did you think it was a phase i hoped it was a phase Mia learned to write her name, but would immediately scribble it out. Jacob still remembers. I didn't like to write that name. I wanted to write J-A-C-O-B. Jacob? Yeah. J-A-C-O-B. You already picked it out, right? Yeah. You look beautiful right now. Okay? Even something as simple as a haircut right wasn't. What do you think, Mia? I, I want someone to cut my hair, and I want it to be like that. Mimi didn't know what to think. I even found him kind of poking at himself, saying things like, why did God make me this way? Why did God make me wrong? 
I was confused and concerned, and I hoped that this obsession with being a boy would go away. But it only grew stronger. The LeMays went searching for answers. Her need to play boy roles and her need to be seen or spoken to as a boy at home became very persistent and very consistent. Those are the hallmarks of a possibly transgender child. Consistence, persistence, and insistence. And she was meeting all those markers. Pediatrician Dr. Michelle Forcier says gender identity is formed very early. It's not a fad or a phase. And I tell parents that even though they may feel or want to believe that. Your four-year-old probably knew that they were a boy or girl at, you know, three, four, five years old. And that's a normal part of child development. Last spring, the LeMays went to Disney World and let their four-year-old dress as Prince Charming. All right, let me dance. He was really happy in that moment. He was being perceived if he wanted to. After agonizing for years, Minnie right. and Joe say they knew it was time to listen to their son. I explained to him that we can bring you to a new school and everyone will know you as a boy from the beginning. Right then, he said, that's what I want. He said, I want to be a boy always. I want to be a boy named Jacob. Mm. And so last June, they cut his hair short, asked family and friends to call him Jacob, and let him live publicly as a boy. He hasn't had any medical procedures, not, not on hormones, yeah. right? Not yet. That won't Way be early. too soon for that. Yeah, way too soon for that. People are going to hear your story and think four is really young. Mm -hmm. But... A mother's heart knows when her child is suffering. All of this is new terrain, but many doctors who work with transgender kids now support families making the transition at an early age. We have a long history of children who have been shut down and told, no, you can't be a boy, or no, you're not a girl. We know those kids suffer, and there's a host of bad health outcomes and psychiatric outcomes. People who are transgender face a greater risk of anxiety and depression. And according to a 2011 survey, a startling 41 percent had attempted suicide. So it, would you tell parents that in some ways it's riskier to wait? Absolutely. In fact, what I say, the biggest harm is to do nothing. Ultimately, Jacob has made that choice in his mind and his heart. Mm -hmm. It's whether or not we accept it or accept not. Accept it. That's right. And now, Jacob says he's proud of who he is. Uh, what are you proud of about yourself? Um, because I'm a boy. You look really handsome. Are you ready for today? Are you ready for school? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I want him to know how proud I am of him, how brave I believe he is, and how no matter what, I am in his corner. Oh, and I awesome. love him. And I oh, always will, because he's my son. This really has been a journey for Jacob and his family. They have a long time before they even need to consider whether he wants medical intervention. Tomorrow, we'll bring you the story of another transgender child who's a few years older. Yeah, another transgender child, because there's, all, there's so many transgender children, because everybody wants to live in their own imaginary world, and it's wonderful that adults want to play along with these children in their imaginary world. Why don't we just put them in the matrix so they can live in an imaginary world until they die? And then when they die and meet their maker, then they can explain to him, uh, the parents, I mean, they can explain to God that, hey, you know, I was just doing what was right for my child. What made my child feel better? What made my... Because a mother knows when a child's heart is hurting. We don't want the child to suffer. We got to make sure that the child is kept comfortable in whatever little prison cage that they designed for themselves. And we can't tell them the truth anymore. We need to tell them a lie. Because they're in love with a lie, and they would rather hear a lie than to hear the truth. And, you know, kids, you know, they they might commit suicide before certain ages, so, so we got to make sure that we, we let them uh, live in their own little imaginary playground so they don't commit suicide. Never mind the fact that there are statistics showing that people who become transgender and have surgeries, uh, a lot of them commit suicide as adults because they're unhappy with themselves. So, whatever. I guess they're, you know, the child is always right. Children are always right. 
Okay. So that making my head explode. I don't know about yours. Uh, I just f figured I would play that because this is the world we're living in. Believe it or not, this is the, the sinful nation that is going to just be burnt up if we continue down this path. I mean, abortion's not enough. We have to literally sell our soul, sell kids to Satan. Okay, so if that was not enough, and you need some more proof to show how um, antichrist this nation has become, here's another little one. This one here is uh, a little boy who uh, is, uh, he basically dresses up as a girl, and he likes dressing up as a girl. He's a drag, uh, drag queen boy. Um, and this, and by the way, before I play this, uh, I just wanted you to know that this little boy uh, also recently was, he's a 10-year-old little boy. Uh, this is in the news. 10-year-old little boy dances on stage for money at adult gay bar in New York. Uh, yeah, this is the same kid. He's a drag queen, little boy. He's a drag kid or whatever. Anyway, so yeah, and this is perfectly fine. This is fine with the world. The world loves this. This is great. This is totally socially acceptable. He's a drag kid. So he's okay He's okay to be dance, dancing in front of adults who are living in sin. He's got, oh, let's see. Oh, he, I think he says... Oh, he's got 105,000 followers on Instagram. Oh, wow. Wow, this kid's doing pretty well for, for, his, for his self. I almost said her. Anyway, so, yeah. This is the wonderful thing that this world is accepting now. This is totally normal. So, listen, listen to this. This is, this is amazing. And if you haven't heard the name Desmond Napolis, get ready for this trailblazing 11-year-old drag kid who RuPaul is calling the future. His bravery is inspiring so many. We're going to talk to him in just a moment, but first, let's take a look at his amazing story. I am Desmond. I'm 11 years old, and I like pizza, trains, and drinking root beers and that's caffeine-free. I also do drag, and I love to put on makeup, dresses, and wigs, and of course, jewelry if necessary. My full drag name is Desmond is Amazing. I feel very happy to have a mom that accepts me. It really touches me deeply that there are other children out there that he's reaching and they're listening to him and he's influencing them to be themselves. I'm very proud of him. I'm proud that he's found his path so early. My greatest joy in this is just seeing Desmond happy. I love doing drag because it makes me feel amazing and self-expressive. It just feels amazing to know that people love what I do. My one big message would be three words, be yourself always. Please welcome Desmond Naples, a.k.a. Desmond is Amazing. <laughs> I love that you love root beer caffeine free. Mm -hmm. I can get on board with that. My mom doesn't like me drinking caffeine. Does it make you hyper? Yeah, me too. They don't like when I drink caffeine either. But Desmond, you're one of the youngest and first drag queen slash kids. Mm -hmm. And I've heard, oh! that, I've heard that you've gotten messages from young adults who look up to you for being who you are. What are some of the notes you've gotten? Some of the notes I've gotten are like that you inspire me very much and I wish I could have had the support that you have um, when I was a child. Yeah. And your parents 
We saw your parents in the piece that we did, and your parents are so supportive of you, but they, they've also, they've encouraged you to stay and be who you are. So how has that inspired you to be open about dressing in drag? They support me by letting me do what I want to do and um, letting me um, dress up and letting me play with um, makeup and trains and... Um, yeah, I really like trains. When I'm out of drag, most of the time I'm playing with trains. It's a tough world out there, and not everyone's accepting of things. And some people have criticized you. What do you say to them? Um, it's fine. Um, <laughs> Desmond here, so thank you, Desmond. But we also have some people that wanted to come see you personally. So please welcome Head of Lettuce. <laughs> How cool is this? Good morning, America. I'm expecting this. <laughs> shocked. Happily shocked. <laughs> so, so, so for for you three, when you when you see Desmond. What, what comes to mind? What do you think about? Inspirational. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Courageous. I wish, because I started uh, doing drag at 15 years old, and obviously not 11, but I wish, even at that age, that I could have had the courage that you have to do what you do and literally yeah. take the art Ooh. and put it in mainstream America. Wow. It's beautiful. You it's amazing. Future. Yeah. You have the future of drag, so you have a lot to live up to. <laughs> and I think it's also awesome that you are blessed with parents that yeah. love and support you unconditionally. Well, I understand that you guys didn't come empty handed. There are some no. special gifts you have for Desmond. Yeah. You guys want to tell us what's out here real quick? Well, I I see, I, I drew Desmond a little green-haired lady. It, it's, it's for you. It's to bring you good luck and prosperity in your future. And, and to eat iceberg lettuce. And to eat iceberg lettuce. Good roughage, okay? There you go. <laughs> With tomatoes and cucumbers. Absolutely. And I brought you a gift basket of some Look of my favorite. Mean? Actually, you know what? Let me actually hand it to you because I think you need to have it in your Desmond, hand. Look at those lights. It is some of my favorite makeup essentials that I use always. And you know, you can never have enough black eyeliners. So my favorite black eyeliners in there. And I have a makeup tutorial DVD. So uh, you can watch it and pick up a couple of tips and techniques. Oh. Yeah. get on board with well, that. Well, Desmond, you know, I'm a teacher over there at Beyond Belief Dance Company, and um, we would love for you to come take some dance classes. Oh, so, oh, I wanted to bring you a quintessential I got it, BBDC <laughs> unicorn. It's got my favorite uh, rhinestone. You cannot be a queen without some diamond nails. <laughs> and some socks. It's got some pins, it's got a little notepad. No, I want you to journal everything that you do because you truly are very brave and courageous. Oh. And let me give you this. Oh. <laughs> thank you guys all for being here. Thank Desmond, you. your parents. Yes. Um, thank you for reminding us all to be who we are on the inside. Yeah, who are, who are we all on the inside? I mean... We can imagine whatever we want to be, and we could just be whatever we are on the inside, you know? Uh, that's telling. And I played a lot of that. I kept it going because I just wanted you to hear how many rewards and how much endorsement this little uh, 11-year-old or 10-year-old kid gets uh, for for just saying that this that that he wants to dance uh do gay dancing basically and uh dress up like a woman and i mean they're bringing him gifts and everything you would think that he was jesus christ you know it, it, the way that they're they're addressing either bringing these gifts to him like he's the king of the world it's pathetic i mean it, this makes i i don't know about you but got a little bit of vomit in my mouth from just you know, from watching this but you just hearing it again on this audio it's it's pathetic 
and you got all these celebrities, and oh, you know, so there's people that hate him, of course, and that would be, you know, the us crazy Christians, because we read the Bible, and the creator of the whole world, all the people, and everything in it, says that there's only one, a man and a woman, there's no other genetic there's no other genders, and guess what? A man shall not dress as a woman. That's what God said. Oh my God, it seems to me like God is the enemy here, so the whole world has to go to war against him, just like in the book of Revelation. That's what this is. In fact, I have seen, uh, long before little Desmond, or whatever the heck his name is, uh, was transgender or whatever he wants to be, whatever he wants to act like he wants to be, or whatever, before all of this, there was a being that was not male or female. I wonder what that would be. Oh, it looks like uh, Baphomet. Baphomet, who has breast of a woman, but looks like a male, of course has a goat head, uh, wings, and, you know, the, the crossing serpents on a post. Uh, yeah, and on top of that, he has a crown. Uh, he's got a fire on top of that crown, you know, because of Lucifer, the light bearer. Um, all these wonderful things. And this is a perfect being because it has no specific gender. It can be all, it can be mixed, uh, everything. It doesn't, oh, and the angels... They have no sex in heaven. You know, they're not male or female. They're not given in marriage. Of course, they did take wives in Genesis 6 of the daughters of men and completely went against God. The fallen angels did. Well, whatever. So, the point here is that we are in a, in a very dark place in America. This country is in such a dark, dark place. There, there is no coming back if we just keep letting this happen. I mean, this is the worst of the worst of the worst. That, I mean, we're just willing to let children do whatever that we want. And, and you got these parents, this parents of this kid, they're, they're so supportive and so proud. The word proud and sin are, are so tied together in America, it's pathetic. Whenever you hear the, whenever you see sin, not far behind that, you see somebody saying how proud they are. I, I swear to God, these people don't even know it, but them saying that is literally holding their fist into God's face. It's literally them saying, "I am mocking you to your face. Come and do something about it." That's how pathetic this is. And I mean, it, I can't even address this any I, I don't even know it, it, it almost takes the words out of my mouth to, to look at this stuff and go what in the hell is wrong with people what's wrong with parents what happened to America but you know archaeologists according to archaeologists Sodom and Gomorrah literally destroyed by fire and brimstone falling from the sky archaeologists not biblical readers, that's not not um, people who are studying the Bible. Archaeologists, according to archaeologists, people of the world that live in the world, and they're not studying the Bible. Well, I mean, some of them might be, I don't know. But my point is, if they're willing to uh, admit that Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed by fire and brimstone literally falling down, and, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah, the place where... Uh, men wanted to have sex with the angels. They'd seen the angels, God's messengers, and they wanted to have sex with something that was supposed to be pure and clean and perfect in heaven. That's, comp that's, like, that's, that's like a slap in God's face. Yeah. And they were so willing to just go, you know, just, oh, how, you know, I mean, literally... The guy's offering his daughter to them. They don't even want his daughter, his young daughter, which is pretty sad that she's just been offered, but whatever. And he's literally offering them that. 
And they want to take the two men, the two uh, angels or whatever, that came to his house instead. Because this this place was so messed up. I don't know. I, I just, I'm almost out of words for this this subject because it makes me so mad. And I'm sure it makes a lot of you mad. And if there's anybody who actually agrees with this, I, I don't know what to say to you. I'm really sorry for you. Because this is not going to bode well for you or your child. Or it's basically abuse. This is basically abuse. This is a this is abuse like, I don't know. And then these kids, I mean the transgender kids, they're going to have surgeries at a young age. And also the governments, the governments are on board with this stuff too. Governments are, like in Canada, I think it was Canada is trying to, you know, if you... If you don't, if your kid says it's another gender than what it is, uh, and you're a Christian and you tell them that's not true or whatever, it's like hate speech, and you could get arrested there. Yeah, coming to a coming to a country near you because this is the way of the world. Uh, this is a United Nations uh, type of thing. They're this is they're pushing this in the United Nations. And of course the United Nations is pushing this. Because it's an anti-Christ agenda. This is literally them pushing Satanism. But they don't... It's obviously not called Satanism. Because they'll never say, Oh yeah, we're going to worship Satan in front of you. No, they're never going to say that. They're just going to do it. And say it's for progressive. Being We're a progressive society. So we're supposed to progress and progress... Until we de-evolve into a bunch of uh, cavemen that literally are uh, beating each other and eating each other and killing each other and just doing whatever we want to each other. Until demon possession is everywhere. Uh, people are uh, uh, taking flaca and just going and eating people's faces off. And just this is the kind of mindless nonsense, lawlessness. Do as thou will. You know, Aliester Crowley. You know, that's his statement. That's Satan for you. Do what you will. So kids, do what you will. Do whatever you want to do. It's okay. Just whatever. We'll accept you and we will love you. And you know, love. I mean, look at that. Why is love becoming sex? Why is love becoming sexuality? Love was not sexuality to begin with. You know, and, and why is love defined as, you know, it's it's more of a sexual thing. And that's okay. But if love means that you're warning somebody that the path that they're on is going to lead to destruction, that's hate. Um, my dad would not let me run out in the street when I was a kid because of I might get hit by a car. Because he loved me, right? So, today's standards... If my dad is warning me and saying, no, you can't go out because you're going to run out on the street. I guess that means that he is hateful and angry all the time. And he's abusing me. So he should just let me out on the street and let me go kill myself. In fact, anybody who has a a child that's a, a, a teenager that's hooked on heroin or drugs or whatever, you should just go buy them tons of needles and say, I support, I support your lifestyle. I support this. And just give them as many needles and as many drugs as possible because you support them. You really love them, so you gotta support this. Or better yet, a kid that goes out and, um, and literally, uh, beats up other kids. Okay. He likes to beat up other kids. He likes to bully them. So just, you know, pat him on the head and say, good job. I support your lifestyle. If this is what you want to do for the rest of your life, I support your lifestyle. I hope that you um, do well at killing and beating people. Uh, You know, whatever. It it doesn't, this is where we're going. This is where society is de-evolving and going to. These people talk about evolution and how we're going to evolve and and the um, we're going to be you know either transhumanism is going to come and we're going to join the 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 human soul will enter into the machine and we'll live forever and transhumanism is going to be so great that's evolving we really think that we're going to get that far not at this level 
And the, the funny thing is, is these people who are saying, you know, they're saying that these kids are born this way, and they're they're at this young age, they're already able to make this decision. Well, on the same the same token, they say that gender is neutral. You can be whatever gender you want. You can so you could switch at any moment. Well, if you're changing your gender, you know, and and you go and have surgeries and stuff, you can't be whatever neutral gender you want to be because you just made a decision exactly what gender you're going to be, right? And gender doesn't change because your DNA still doesn't change and God will still know you for what you were born as. So I don't know what they're thinking. But they don't address God as the creator and they don't love him anyway. So it doesn't matter. But they're in love with... Their their God is sexuality. They have put that above and beyond everything else. That's their idol, and that's their religion, and that's what they believe in. These kids and their parents and everything around that. That's what's happened. They've put their their whole belief system into a sexuality, a gender, uh, whatever thing that they're they're hooked on and they're obsessed with. And if, they're too, if the kids are too young and they don't quite understand all of that, well, the parents are hooked on it. So that the parents are going to push that on the child. As far as I'm concerned, that's, the, that's abuse. The parents are abusing their child at that point. And at that point, the child should be taken away and not be allowed to be raised by these mentally ill people. Because that's what they are. This is all a mental illness. And the worst part is, in the end times, these are the same people who are going to call all the Christians mentally ill, and they're going to be taken away because the Christians are the mentally ill ones. So, the insane asylum is going to be out in the streets and free, Well, the people who are sane are going to be kept indoors and medicated. And probably put to death. So, think about that. That's where we're at. This is, this is America. This is the dream. This is the new Babylon. The new kingdom of whatever go whatever whatever you want to do goes. It's just, you know, I know I'm babbling on. It's just this is something I I felt like I had to rant about because after I watched this stuff, I just I just wanted to punch a hole through the wall or something. It's just so sickening. And I know a lot of you agree with me, and I know a lot of people are upset at this, and of course, we can't stop it because parents are just giving their kids to Satan. They can't. He, Satan can't take their kids fast enough from them. And while he's taking their kids, they're proud of their kids for going with Satan. That's how messed up this world has become. They're just like, here you go, Satan. I'm so proud of you. You finally made it to the ninth level of hell. And I'm going to feed my child right to hell. And the parents, they're just, the parents are not going to make it. And unfortunately, some of these parents will call themselves Christians. That's the worst part. I bet you some of these people would say that they are Christian. Because people don't actually read the Bible. People don't actually, you know, study anything anymore. They go to church, the, the pastor only reads them two verses. And the rest of it's music and concerts. So that, that's what they get at church nowadays. So I could see why they don't know anything about the Bible. And plus, they're, you know, no one expects to read the Bible. They expect their pastor to do that for them. Because you, know, you, can't, you can't actually be expected to read the thing that you're supposedly supposed to put all your faith in and believe that, you know, that your creator wants you to read his word. You can't be expected to actually read the thing. Well, anyway, I need to take a breath and calm down. Basically, I don't have much more else to say. I just kind of rambled and, and ranted about every, this on this whole episode. I'm hoping you guys get something out of this. Well, once again, thank you for listening. If you like this show, please share it with your friends. Promote it as much as possible before the internet censors us and takes down all of our content. Also check out the Fringianity Podcast Facebook group and page. New shows will be posted there, as well as show images. So check that out too. That's all for this show. So thank you very much for listening. And God bless.